Hello everyone, I'm Hayden from CGY Planespotting, and this is another one of my editing tutorials. Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be editing this Air Canada A220, taking off from runway 17 left at YYC in a very spectacular sunset, but as you can see, the lighting on the fuselage is just outright gone, and there isn't much texture in the clouds, and that's what we're going to be bringing out today. So, we're going to start out by bringing up the shadows to... 50 at most, don't go 100 because then it just looks absolutely terrible. So, I would say 29 is good, and we're going to go to the optics section and use profile corrections and remove the chromatic aberration. And next, we're going to go to, we're going to press return or enter on our Windows uh, laptop when I'm on a MacBook. We're going to go to filter, because in this case you can see that this shot is not the sharpest in terms of motion blur, this is only at 1 200th of a second and it was handheld with my 150 to 600, so it's not the sharpest shot. We're gonna go to Topaz and we're gonna go motion blur, very blurry in this case. As you can see, Topaz has done an absolutely fantastic job of cleaning up this motion blur. So we're gonna click OK and get on with it. Now that that's been done, we're going to crop the image now. So, what we're going to do is, this image isn't very level in my opinion, I think it's a little bit angled, so we're going to do this, kind of drag it down from the top and do it as you want. And for centering the aircraft, what we're going to do is, we're going to go here, and you can see this little bit in the middle here, where this intersects, that's the very middle of the centering. We're going to make it so that this is right in the middle of the fuselage when it, in terms of top to bottom. So we're going to move this down a little bit and you can see it's right in the middle. So we're going to finish this crop preview. That looks good in my opinion. And honestly, I think that there's... Sometimes you don't really have to care about the centering all that much. This is not jet photos after all. So I'm just going to move this up a tiny bit. Not much. And I think that looks quite good. So now what we're going to do is we're going to copy this layer and we're going to rename it to Plain Brighton. Now that we've done that, we're going to go to the Pen Tool, and we're just going to mask the aircraft. If you don't know how to use the Pen Tool, you can go watch uh, One More Week to Go's tutorial on light recoveries. This tutorial is loosely based off of that. In fact, this is basically... That is basically where I got the method for this from. I think that Alvin's tutorials are great, and he is a great person to ask for for advice. So, you can just fast forward if you want to, but if you want to see me masking, it's going to be sped up. And just a quick note, if you want to skip the landing gear doors because it takes, uh, not the doors, the, the landing gear itself because it takes forever to mask with the pen tool, that's completely fine, but I wouldn't recommend skipping the landing gear doors. Alright, so now that we've finished masking this aircraft, what we're going to do is we're going to go over to the layer panel here, and we're going to click this square with a circle inside of it twice. You can see here, now we have ended up with a little silhouette of the mask. And you can see that now what we're going to do is, we're just going to go back here, and you can see we have the outline of the aircraft now. What we're going to do is we're going to duplicate this layer, and we're going to name it Sky. And we're going to just go around the image, just create a little square with this, and we're going to go to the plain brighten layer, go to the blending area, and click screen. Now you can see that the aircraft is a bit brighter than it was previously. We're going to go to the sky layer now, and what we're going to do is, here are the secrets to bringing out the colors and the texture in a sky when editing in Photoshop. You have the contrast, the exposure, 
the whites, the blacks, clarity, dehaze, and saturation. Those are the sliders that you want to use for bringing out the texture and colors in a sky. So, in this case, I'm going to add a little bit of contrast, not too much. Bring up the whites, don't bring down the but don't bring down the whites because then that won't help you with bringing out the texture. Bring down the blacks. You can see that there's a ton of shadow clipping on the aircraft, but that's fine because we've masked it. And we're going to go to the clarity. Add a little bit. Not to the point where there will be halos around the aircraft you want. Just a little bit, like 40 at max maybe. And you want to go to dehaze. Add a little bit of that, not too much. You can see we've already brought out the texture in the sky a ton. We're going to go to the saturation. Don't bring it up a ton because then it just looks ridiculously oversaturated. And we're going to go maybe 20 for the max. You can also use the texture to bring out some of the texture in the clouds, but I wouldn't say that helps all that much. It still does work, though. And I wouldn't recommend going anywhere beyond 20. So now that we've done this, we're going to click OK. You can see here that we've already brought out the texture in the sky a ton, and the aircraft is still nice and bright. We're going to go to Layer, and we're going to click Flatten Image. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to go to the Camera Raw Filter, and we're going to bring up the exposure a little bit, brighten up the aircraft, add some contrast, bring down the highlights a tiny bit, bring up the shadows, bring up the whites, bring down the blacks, I'm going to bump up the clarity a tiny bit, add some dehaze, not too much, bring up the vibrance. With the tone curve, we're going to bring up the lights, and we're going to bring up the darks, and bring the shadows down. Now we're going to go to the linear gradient section, and we're going to add a linear gradient from side to side like this. The angle is personal preference, really. We're going to bring up the exposure, add some contrast, bring down the highlights, Add a linear gradient over here. Bring down the exposure. Bring up the highlights. Add a little bit of contrast. You can see now that we've added some depth to the photo and brightened the aircraft too. And we're also going to add another linear gradient from top to bottom. We're going to bring down the exposure a tiny bit and bring up the highlights. Now you can see that this is what we've gotten from this, and I'm going to click OK. Now we're going to go back to the camera raw filter, and we're just going to brighten up the photo a little bit more. Not too much, and not too little. So I would say this is good. Don't mind the histogram. It's... Yeah, there's a ton of highlight clipping, but that's just on the sunset, and it doesn't look extremely overexposed anyways. Typically, you would only really mind the histogram when the photo looks insanely overexposed, which in this case it doesn't. We're going to click OK, and personally, that is basically it. I mean, you can repeat this process over and over again until you personally like it, but I think this photo is basically as far as I've taken it and as far as it needs to be taken, and this is my way of bringing out the texture and colors in clouds, as well as recovering lost lights, specifically in a shot like this where it was shot eh, one or two minutes after sunset when there's no more light on the aircraft. Thank you all for watching my third editing tutorial, and I will see you guys next time. See Joy Plan Spotter, out.